Morning, Professor Spooner. How are you today? Good morning, Frank. I'm fine, thanks, and I hope you are too. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's been a, an interesting week, and I have uh, it's the last week of our university semester, and I'm preparing for a, a final lecture of the semester to 200 students tomorrow, and try working out how to uh, finish up a, a three months discussion of globalization. And it, it, it occurs to me that uh, even though I think we may have uh, said something about uh, globalization being uh, paradoxical before, it stands out for me more now because of two things. Um, and partly actually because of what uh, was the main theme of the this past week's issue of The Economist, uh, which was inequality, which actually was our main topic, the main topic of our lecture in the course last week. Um, the, the, I mean, what I've been mostly interested in in globalization uh, for years now is, is um, what we've been calling informalization, the way everything has, um, all behavior has become more and more informal and all the the um, special formalities that I was brought up with over 50 years ago uh, now are um, insignificant and, and right. uh, people, in fact, I think young people don't, don't even know about them. Anyway, um, the, uh, the, obviously the most significant thing that's happened in recent years is the um, uh, what had been the most important factor in the organization of society from, from as far back as we have any records at all was the uh, um, uh, distinction between, was the gender distinction between men and women. Uh, every, every society we know of anywhere in the world was organized, the, the, the first factor of any sort of form of social organization had to do with the difference between how men were treated and how women were treated. And now, uh, gradually, starting in the 1950s, when women started wearing what in England we call trousers, uh, we gradually proceeded from that to the point where uh, everybody can actually choose their own gender. Mm -hmm. um, so this makes one wonder uh, what uh, a global society is going to be like if there not only are uh, none of the formalities which we used to think of as formalities, but uh, not, not even the formalities of gender. Um, everything is up for uh, decision of each individual to decide how they're going to fit in society as a whole, even though in fact one of the biggest problems in modern society, which is the reason that um, psychiatrists have been making so much money over the past century is that uh, people have more and more difficulty fitting into society or, or more and more people, not everybody, but a larger and larger proportion of the total number of people are beginning to have difficulty working out how they should fit into society. Anyway, so th this, is, um, this is the um, informalization of of society, which had been very formal in the past. So where does the inequality but, uh, come in? At the same time, where, yeah, where, where does the, the inequality yeah. come in? Because the, um, uh, the, the big problem with global society is organization. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we um, uh, have always had a problem of uh, working out how what is the most efficient way to manage society so that everybody contributes to their full to what mm -hmm. actually is going on in society mm -hmm. and um, uh, before the industrial revolution uh, the, the 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 problem was land ownership that that uh, a small proportion of the total number of people that owned land and the rest worked for them and then since industrial revolution so uh, gradually, more and more, uh, so over the last 200 years or so, um, uh, the um, inequalities have been much more uh, um, 
extreme. Much more difficult to control uh -huh. um, and changing all the time. But still, in, in, in the system that we've got used to calling capitalism in, uh, since the middle of the 19th century, um, uh, inequality keeps increasing. And it's just recently that it's become a, a subject for study. Uh, but um, the, 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 nobody seems to have any idea of how we can um, reorganize society or, in fact, organize the, the society as it is becoming, which is so different from what society was that we grew up in, uh, in such a way that um, everybody will be able to contribute their full to society. And after all, um, that's really going to be the most important um, uh, uh, objective for us to work with in the coming years um, of a, where, if we really are pro proceeding towards a global society. Well, then let me let me just so, go um, ahead. I'm sorry, you you're about to sum this up because I do have a question. Uh, everything, <clears throat> every, every, uh, we the, the, we're finishing up now with uh, with, uh, with um, a uh, completely flexible. Um, a sort of society that where everybody does exactly what they want to do and decides exactly what sort of person they, they want to be. Uh, but at the same time, we're completely incapable of organizing it. We, the, the form of organization that we've worked with for some 200 years now, the nation state is not working as well as it used to. And anyway, with it, as the society becomes more and more global, uh, nothing is contained completely within the nation state and we've so far completely failed to develop any forms of social organization larger than the United than the nation state that would in fact have something to do with the globalization of society mm -hmm. so that's my that's my point for today <laughs> well it's very interesting um, I, I would just uh... I make an observation that for we've often talked about how globalization has been with us for many, many centuries. Uh, and really what we're looking at now is a, an increasing acceleration of it due to technology and other factors. But um, I'm not particularly sure that there's a, a strong connection between increasing globalization and uh, inequality. I think inequality uh, is, is separate unto itself. Um, and uh, you would think, I think, looking at it, uh, that, oh, wow, these new tools of globalization and the ability to uh, interact more effectively with people around the world is somehow going to uh, uh, modify extreme inequality. Uh, and it probably has in some areas. But when I think of inequality, I always think of economics. And uh, I, I'm not sure whether or not globalization has delivered on that uh, quote unquote promise of uh, economic, equal, economic equality. I don't think it has. Um, no, it certainly hasn't. Yeah. Uh, but it, and you're right that it's the, the economic inequality is probably the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. But there's all sorts of other sorts, other types of inequality as well. Um, that, that have to do with the opportunities different people have. Mm -hmm. um, for example, with education. Yes. Um, yes. So um, uh, uh, it makes an enormous difference to your potential uh, in life and the way you can contribute to society as a whole uh, if you get all the benefits of a of, uh, of higher education, which not mm -hmm. everybody does. And, and, and sometimes it's because of their um, uh, intellectual potential, probably, but not in most cases. No, I agree, it's not in most has, cases. Usually has to do with opportunities, mm -hmm. which some people have great opportunities and some people don't. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and we, we talked about the problem of organization before, uh, but I think it's probably getting more serious. Uh, and um, it's going to be interesting to see, well, I mean, I, uh, I have been thinking also for some time that, that our political organization is not doing as well as it was. Uh, democracy isn't working as well as it used to. 
uh, probably to a large extent because we thought it was working fantastically well when it really wasn't. Uh, and now more and more people are paying, uh, are uh, exercising their political rights. Um, um, and this is not having a potential, uh, um, a particularly good effect because um, they, uh, dif different people in a democracy have different ideas about what's the right thing to do. Right, right. Um, um, and so we have um, uh, a political mess in England and we have a political mess in this country yeah, as well. Yeah. And we have a political um, mess in France. Uh, and uh, in France, uh, I mean, they're all different types yeah. of mess, but they're yeah. all messy. Yeah, yeah they are. Uh, uh, so um, we're, we see, really seem to be heading towards a, an organizational uh, swamp. <laughs> well, we, uh, I know where you're headed to tomorrow. You're headed to your final lecture. So uh, <laughs> we'd, we'd, love to, we'd love to be flies on the wall there and listen. So uh, we, we, uh, we'll look forward to a, a report next week. So, okay. <laughs> all right, Professor Spooner, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, bye. Spooner, how are you today? Good morning, Frank. I'm fine, thanks, and I hope you are too. Thank um, you. This morning, I uh, well, I think you know that uh, uh, some time ago now, in an introductory essay to a volume on globalization, I wrote that globalization was on the cards from the start um, yes. because I thought that uh, the fact that um, population growth had uh, forced uh, had um, led us to uh, spread throughout the world and we had language um, meant that sooner or later we were all going to be in contact with each other uh, but what's always puzzled me is why in fact do uh, uh, people always collect together in the largest possible numbers and that's happened throughout human history and and until about 10,000 years ago, the numbers were always very small because of the availability of food and we were not yet producing our own food. Mm -hmm. But since food has not become a problem, we keep collecting together in larger and larger numbers and now we're going to become a totally urbanized world uh, by, in the, what remains of this century as far as I can see. Anyway, um, somebody I met in an elevator a few years ago uh, um, uh, and got talking to about uh, the axial age and the and big history, uh, and then became we became quite close friends and have been uh, talking to each other ever since. Had an interesting new idea this week, which he told me about, which I think helps us to understand a lot of things. Um, and that is that um, when we um, uh, left our primate cousins up in the trees in uh, South Central Africa and came down onto the plains and uh, wandered out in away from the trees on the plains, we were vulnerable to predators yes. in a way that we had never been before. And uh, it was then that we started collecting together in larger and larger numbers in order to, uh, for security. And that tendency seems to have been part of our evolution because after all, we were not, uh, we had not evolved entirely into the, the creatures we uh, became in the following millennia. Uh, that was uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I think that explains it. Um, however, um, the problem, of course, that we have now is that um, the, uh, we have to organize ourselves and it's the organize, our organization of ourselves which is leading to all the problems. So um, the, the, this evolutionary proclivity that uh, appear, appears to have um, um, uh, been launched uh, a few hundred thousand years ago is still driving us to collect together in larger and larger numbers and now there are really no restrictions on that process mm -hmm. but um, because as the numbers get larger the organizational problems get bigger um, all the problems we're having in globalization have to do with different forms of organization and of course 
um, uh, when the age of, well, literacy helped us to develop um, much larger um, uh, forms of, or, of political organization and economic organization for that matter. Um, but, um, uh, and then the age of empire started with uh, 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 literate administrations some 4,000 years ago and lasted really until the middle of the last century when we finally got rid of the European empires. Um, but the, and the empires really did bring things closer together. Mm -hmm. But the problem with the empires was that they divided the world up into administrative districts. And um, when they, uh, uh, they, when they disintegrated and ceased to be empires in the middle of the last century or in the f first uh, since 1900, um, the, the, their administrative districts became what we have come to call nation states um, because of the problems of the relation of the um, uh, interrelation of, of um, spiritual and political authority, mm -hmm. which uh, mm -hmm. we've sold uh, in some ways for, uh, for some periods, as with the Pope and the archbishops and so on in the Catholic Church, uh, but uh, not uh, on a um, permanent basis, as we can see with the Reformation uh, 500 years ago. Anyway, uh, so now we have this problem of um, uh, um, um, conflict between, well, the, the, um, since, the, since the end of the Age of Empires, we've had a, a sort of fake empire run by America as a, the world hegemon. Uh -huh. um, and um, that has um, added to the problems of the um, uh, uh, formation of nation states, because um, the, the whole point of the pro of formation of nation states was that um, each state would be independent in terms of religion as well as political organization, and it would uh, and no state would have the right to tell neighboring states what the correct in, uh, uh, interpretation of the Bible was, mm -hmm. uh, but um, the the problem with American hegemony has been that um, it, not only has it been um, influencing the development of nation states since the end of the empires, but it, it's also um, been uh, uh, um, exerting cultural influence in other ways. And uh, so now we have th this terrible problem uh, between, well, with Iran, for example, in the, in the Middle East. And last uh, Friday, when we were una unable to meet, I spent the day in Washington okay. at a board meeting of, um, uh, of an organization that was a consortium of American universities. And I was representing the uh, University of Pennsylvania um, working out um, uh, how, to, how to solve some of the problems, current problems of the American Institute of Iranian Studies, mm. um, which is an organization that began in uh, the late 60s that I've been involved in ever since. And um, of course, um, uh, since the Iranian Revolution has not been able to function in the way that it was functioning before, and this has meant that um, whereas we had a way of training Iranists, people specializing in Iranian studies, which is quite a, a well-developed historical field of academic study. Uh, but since then, since the uh, late 70s, we've, had, we've not been able to train anybody in this field. Mm -hmm. And now all the people who were trained in that field and were heading programs in half a dozen universities in America, apart from other universities in Europe. They're all retiring. Um, are, are retiring and there's nobody to replace them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this means that whereas um, up until 50 years ago, 
we knew a lot about the world if you that is in the universities although people in the state department uh, tended not to know very much about the rest of the world uh, now in the age of globalization because of what we've been doing um, in other ways we're not training scholars uh, uh, and scientists with uh, experience in in the world as a whole. Right. Let, let, let me let me let me jump in a little bit. You 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 <laughs> you've thrown a lot at me from that one elevator ride, uh, and to, thankfully you you indicated that you had developed a close friendship with this person, and it was not all in one elevator ride. Um, I I fully understand the 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 fact that. Uh, uh, Neanderthals who descended from the trees and were able to make it out to the plains, especially those who could hold their young under one arm uh, to get out to the watering hole uh, and thus were forced to stand up uh, straighter uh, because they were carrying their young and then do that and get back into the safety of the woods and then come back the next day with another mother with another young uh, uh, child and then groups of them eventually in order to just protect themselves in the event of predators so more would be able to return to the safety of the trees and going on to where we are today i mean this is a blink of an eye in history <laughs> right this is what 30 or 40 or 50,000 years or so um uh -huh. so where this is going to go I, I think where that group of neanderthal mothers with their babies at a watering hole out in the middle of a, of a plain in south central africa five or six of them 50,000 years ago to where we are now with 22 million people living in Mexico City or a billion and a half people connected on Facebook to have happened in 50,000 years is pretty remarkable. Um, and then I, I superimpose that that fact on the president of the United States making the speech on Wednesday in front of the United Nations in which he said globalization is dead it's it's no longer operable it's been replaced by national patriotism and i just don't get it i don't understand it is, is it a is it a complete i mean the the speech had to have been written it, it clearly was not written by the president the way he delivered it was clear he had not read it before uh, it's it's official policy of the united states government how is it that people are not understanding what's happening, where even the most ill-informed president of this country can can stand there and, and make that kind of remark? I, I don't understand where the disconnect is. What do well, you there's, think? There's, there's, there's so much competition between uh, political units of different um, sizes. So. Uh, the, the large ones compete with each other globally, and now there's competition, obviously, between or de developing competition between America, Europe, European Union, and um, China, and, mm -hmm. and India, actually. Um, and locally, but among smaller units, so uh, between uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan, which is the, which their relationship's been in the news this past week because they can't agree on their border, mm -hmm. which again was drawn by the British mm -hmm. the in 1893. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, and Africa is uh, just a patchwork of these problems. Um, so um, I'm afraid. Uh, in my mind, of course, I have to be careful what I say so that I don't appear to be doing this, but um, I think that uh, uh, America is um, causing more problems like this than any of the other large countries at the moment, although that may change as uh, the others gradually become more powerful. Uh, because, uh, and, and very, to a large extent, the reason is that the people in charge of policy in this country are, are not academically trained to understand what's going on in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And 50 years ago, uh, I don't think people in America were that well trained either, partly because they are, whereas in Europe, 
everybody's every country is very close to every other country, and and then the uh, many of them were had empires which took them out know, to all over the world. America didn't have an empire, at least not in that sense, and uh, had uh, two large ponds, one on either side, uh, which separated it from what was going on in other parts of the world. And now we're told that only 30% of Americans, even now in the 21st century, have passports. Right, right, right. So, so it's a, it's really is an anomaly that the the economically most powerful country in the world um, is the center of the of um, uh, the least knowledge about what's going on in the rest of the world. So, in a, in a funny way, when when we uh, uh, several years ago would would talk about nations uh, or or states. We would talk about states that were uh, actively trying to thwart the forces of globalization. All right. And we would talk about countries such as North Korea. Um, we would we would talk a little bit about Iran, I think, even um, where we are now after several years of discussion. The United States has now entered that category. Mm, yeah. Isn't that so? Well, you know uh the uh i mean it's it's such a um a paradox really that the the middle east is the bound most of the boundaries in the middle east were drawn by europeans uh and then reinforced by americans uh and american policy since since the middle of the last century has been to not to export democracy but to reinforce political stability as Americans understood it, which was um, not democracy because democracy was unpredictable, mm -hmm. uh, partly because it wanted to nationalize local oil companies, mm -hmm. uh, which were American owned. Right. Um, and uh, Britain had something to do with this as well. I'm not uh, yeah, Anglo American oil. Uh, yeah. Well, very um, interesting. Yeah. So, so what what do you think when when you get back to your view of the progressive uh, nature of globalization, going back to that blink of an eye to our our cousins or aunt descendants or ancestors, I should say, coming out of the trees into the plains? Uh, where are we going here? Well, I think <laughs> that um, uh, I mean the, the the what that explains is why coming together has uh, um, been a more important part of the historical process than conflict. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're, um, uh, there's probably more conflict now than there has been, or more, more serious conflict now than there has been in the past uh, because of these problems of, of organization. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think it's going to change again um, as the um, differences in, in economic and political power between um, America, the European Union, and the other large um, uh, political units, uh, especially China and India, uh, they become more closely related to each other and mm -hmm. have to uh, reach some sort of agreement. Because at the moment, there's no effort at all to... Uh, um, uh, reach agreement on a global level. The the United Nations was in a way developed for, with that purpose, but has been um, not been successful. Well, I think we should probably leave it at there, Professor Schmoner. Um Very interesting. Uh, I'm I'm going to uh, keep that in mind as I try to interpret the events of this week and the, the week coming up. So, all we'll right. Watch what happens. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.